have one last announcement to make. Jesus is coming again. So, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this morning that uh, we have this great privilege to come before you to uh, worship you. And we can do so because of the Lord Jesus, his work on the cross for us, his death, his resurrection. And now, Lord, as we consider his coming again, we just want to pray, Lord, for your presence and Holy Spirit, that you would use me as your uh, mouthpiece uh, to share to, the pe to your people what your coming is all about and uh, what we should do. How, do. how do you respond? So use me, Holy Spirit, for your glory and honor, Lord Jesus. Give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Right. Uh, 45 years ago, uh, I sang in a... Uh, Gospel campaign choir, those of you who are in the 50s, 60s will remember those time when young people would stand up in a group to sing in a choir. And what the song was, Jesus is coming again. How many of you know this hymn? Yes, no? Oh dear. I sang it with vigor because the words were so, uh, you know, exciting. Marvelous message we bring, glorious carol we sing, Wonderful word of the king, Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. No? Okay. Yeah. Maybe morning, maybe noon, maybe evening, maybe soon. Coming again, coming again. Oh, what a wonderful day it will be. Jesus is coming again. I sang it at that age, 15 years old. Okay, you know, you enjoy the choir but don't really understand what the coming of Jesus means. And today I confess that this uh, teaching, this doctrine rates uh, very low in my life. It's a low priority. Because I think, uh, you know, we don't take it so seriously compared to how we were anticipating the new government announcement. Yeah, everybody was all worked up for the past four days. Jesus is coming again. The new government is coming. So we have to also anticipate his coming. But I thank the Lord that uh, he has uh, helped me to understand, helped me to grasp uh, the meaning of uh, his coming. So uh, this morning, I hope to rejuvenate your interest, uh, the importance, the fundamentals of why Jesus has to come, both to the church and personally. Okay, so let me start uh, with a quiz, right? I don't profess to know everything, uh, but what I know, let me impart this to you and uh, test. Let's test your knowledge a bit about Christ's second coming. Right, so the first question What is the study of the second coming of Christ called? Right? Estacology. Bromatology, coleoptology, I think, dipterology, eschatology. What is the answer? E. All right, that's correct. Now, each of the ABC has a meaning. Huh? So maybe our scientist here, uh, Kelvin, what is uh, dipterology? Dipterology is the study of flies. Coleoptology, study of beetles. And bromatology is the study of food. And astrocology, A, is the study of uh, crayfish or udang galala. Huh? But this morning, we are studying, or rather we are looking at the subject of eschatology, the second coming of Christ. Next question. How many events were foretold in the Bible? A, 258, 310, 3, 565, 735, 833. What's your answer? Wow, guess. 735 is correct. I'm sorry I don't have a, I don't have a Kit Kat for you. Excellent. Hazel. 735, yeah? In the, in the Bible, uh, 735 events were foretold. Yeah, that came. Now, next one. How many of the foretold scriptural events came true? A, B, C, D, E. Anyone? 
Wow, guess. E. Okay, we have E. Anyone else? Answer is 596. Now, just now you saw 735 and 596. Why is the variance there? Some have not come true because Jesus has not come. Yeah? Next question. How many references are there about the nativity or about Christmas, the birth of Christ? Huh? Wow, you're very clever. I see highlighted. Yes. All right. <laughs> it's 17, about. Okay. The, I, I, I look through, I think 17, but lebe kurang. Now, let's look at this one. How many times does the New Testament mention about Jesus' second coming? A, B, C, D, E. Anyone? E? Anyone? D, 318, yeah? So in the whole book, in the New Testament, there are 318 mention of Jesus' second coming, which is a quarter of every chapter in the New Testament. So, if that be the case, shouldn't we be a bit more concerned what Jesus is telling us? Yeah? Next one. This is 10 years ago in a Pew Research, uh, 2012, how many percent of Americans, unfortunately we don't have in Malaysia, believe Jesus will return in their lifetime? 12, 18, 29, 40, anyone? Twelve percent, ten years ago, yeah. So the expectation of Jesus coming is not very high. Only twelve percent, and I think today, ten years later, probably maybe less than ten. Apart from Christianity, what other religions uh, doctrine uh, talks about the second coming of Christ? Sorry for the bad English there. Anyone? E, yeah, Islam, yeah. It's part of the doctrine that Jesus is coming again. But of course, uh, what their doctrine about Jesus coming again is very different. Yeah? He's coming to uh, kill the pigs and uh, kill the infidels and so on. Yeah? So uh, that is... Uh, in the same Pew Research, uh, this one here, they actually ask Muslims around the world, where in your lifetime... How uh, would you expect Jesus to come? Malaysia was also uh, in the research, and 54, 54% of Muslims in Malaysia say Jesus is coming again in their lifetime. So what about us this morning? What about us? So when I took on this uh, topic, oops. oops, sorry. When I took on this topic uh, of Christ again coming, uh, the subject is so wide, so deep, uh, different interpretations, yeah? so peering. So I was struggling how to present the second coming of Christ in 25 minutes. Where do I start? Yeah? And as I studied, I'm humbled. I'm humbled and actually I grieve over how little care I have put into the second coming of Christ in terms of his, how much Jesus cares and spoke about that he's coming again, that I don't take seriously. We rejoice over Christmas. In a month's time, we'll be celebrating Christmas of the first coming of Christ. Yeah? But little attention is indeed given to his second coming, which is even more spectacular. Yeah? So, the Advent season, which starts next week in December, uh, is a good time for us to uh, consider, think about Christ's second coming. So why is it an imperative uh, that we take the future event uh, of second, the second coming of Christ so seriously? So what is expected of Christians yeah, uh, as we live in the anticipation of His coming? And I was just talking to uh, Kelvin just now. I said, oh, this topic is so wide. How to, uh, how to preach it? Yeah? How to give a sermon and very comforting 
Kelvin just say, so how? So I'm going to give you Christ's second coming 101. So I'm going to present you the facts about what it's all about, where is he coming, when, what happens, why it affects you and me, and how do we respond as a church and individually. So, when will he come? Oh, sorry, where? Right? Uh, last week, I think uh, Bun Kun alluded to the fact that uh, Jesus is coming again, all right? And he is very likely to arrive in Jerusalem at the Mount of Olives. We read this in Acts chapter 1, verse 11 and 2. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. So Jesus is coming again. Now in what form? Jesus is coming the way he left. How did he leave? Yeah, he came in the body, he left to the clouds, yeah, in the body, and he's coming in the same manner. Right. When will he come? Now, this has been a subject of uh, many, many uh, predictions back in the 1800s, all right? Uh, that's how the Jehovah Witnesses came about through this prediction and also the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yeah? When? No one knows. Yeah, but concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. The Father in heaven knows. Yeah? So we are told to watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour that Jesus will come. So, uh, let's not try to predict or try to do some calculations as to when, right? We don't know. Only the Father knows. But Paul has given a uh, sort of a hint, if I can call it. I think he doesn't know himself, but what he's saying is, for you yourselves are fully aware that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. Yeah? A thief doesn't tell you when he comes, right? If he tells you, then he's not a thief. Or a very brazen thief. Yeah? So, why is Paul saying that? I think, yeah? The coming like a thief is to tell those who are not believers of Christ that they don't know when he comes. But, here it says, whilst the people are saying there is peace and security, then suddenly destruction will come upon them as labor pains come upon a pregnant woman they will not escape. What does this tell us? Right? Uh, I think some of us are mothers here who has given birth to children. Right? So, can you remember your contraction? Painful. Painful yeah. Right? Very long. Yeah. Come 30 minutes, then go away, then you wait, then come shorter, 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 and then the baby comes. Right? So, what is, what is it about labor pains that come upon a pregnant woman? It's telling Christians that the birth of the baby is coming. All right? But then it's, you know it's coming, all right? but you don't know when. It's coming, 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 and then eventually it will come. Yeah? There will be times yeah, when we wait and wait and it doesn't come. And then there are signs. What are these pains? Yeah? These are signs of times that we have to be aware of. And what are the times? I think uh, it's very clear we can see. Yeah? Although ultimately, it's only when the Antichrist comes, then uh, that will be the time. But now, we can actually see yeah? the, 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 the seeds of uh, the Antichrist uh, coming. We see evil. Yeah? We see a lot of uh, things that we, 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 we can't imagine, yeah, it's, it's coming. So, be aware, all right, that Jesus is coming. Paul has told us these are the signs and it will suddenly come and we will not escape Jesus coming. Right. What happens when he comes? To Thessal uh, to 1 Thessalonians 4, I think very uh, well, 
reference verse, we will meet him again. Yeah, the dead will rise, and those of us who are still around, we will be taken up, caught up, and uh, meet him in the air. So this is what is said in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. Now, uh, this is what they call the rapture. Again, uh, I would say that there's a fair bit of controversies or depends on which school you believe. Uh, there is the rapture, the pre-tribulation, the pre-war, and then post-rapture. All right, so these are all the different views about the rapture. But for us, I think what is important is let us look at the fundamentals. We need to have that firm belief that Jesus is coming and how it's going to be, time will, uh, we will know. Yeah? But let us hold fast to this uh, confession that Jesus is coming again and we will meet him. All right? Uh, we will be given a new body, a sinless, blade, no blemish body to meet the Lord Jesus. The dead will also rise again and be given a new body. Of course, the big question is, uh, why does he need to come again? He already came, he died on the cross, forgave our sins, yeah? But why does he need to come again? All right, we read in the Bible many promises, and it's, these are the promises. Salvation for those who are waiting for him, all right? Hebrews 9.28. So Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Yeah? He'll come and save us from this uh, earth that is full of uh, trouble. He has come to collect us. The famous verse, uh, John chapter 14. In my father's house has many rooms. If there are not, I would have. If there were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to, going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me. That you may also be with where I am. So Jesus is coming back to take us back. He's also coming to judge the world. Yeah? For we must all appear before ju the judgment seat of Christ. So each may be, re be recompensed for his deeds in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. 2 Corinthians 5.10. So, Jesus is coming back to judge us. Paul says, Now there is in store for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. Not only for me, uh, only to me, but also to those who have longed for his appearing. Yeah? The judge will give us the crown. Yeah? Number four, to defeat Satan. Finally, yeah, this you can read in uh, Revelation chapter 20. Okay. Right, point number five, to rule and reign. I think we have uh, sung, sung about uh, how Jesus, how great our God is and how he will reign. And that's what he's going to do. Yeah, 1 Timothy 6, 15, 16. The appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which will, he will display at the proper time, he who is blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings, Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in unapproachable light, whom no one has ever seen or can see, to him be honour and eternal dominion. Amen. So Jesus is coming to rule. And finally, he's also coming to fulfill the covenant, his covenant with Israel to restore the people of Israel. Yeah? And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Jesus is coming as their Messiah 
right now, uh, the Israel, like Israelis don't believe, the Jews don't believe that Jesus is the mass, Messiah. And when he comes, he will tell them, show to them that indeed he's the Messiah. So how does it affect us? Now that I've given you all the verses, and <laughs> how does it affect you and me when about Jesus' second coming? Right? I think the key word here is uh, hope. The key word here is uh, hope. We, over the past week, I think we were all hoping, 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 right? that a new government will be formed and a preferred candidate is appointed as the PM. Isn't that your hope? Yes? No? Yeah, I think we all hope for that. And we human beings, uh, you know, have to have a hope for something good to come. And this very hope that we have that Jesus is coming again gives us this assurance. Yeah? Hope helps us to look at a new future where there is perfect justice and righteousness. Yeah? Uh, I was just uh, talking to Chopa just now. We said, yeah, okay, this government may not be the best, but I think, okay, lah, we can accept. Lah. But the future government that is coming, where Jesus is Lord and King, there will be perfect justice and perfect righteousness. And this gives us hope. Our faith and hope needs an anchor. All right? Just as I think last week, our hope was anchored on one particular person, that he will be the PM. As Christians, as believers seated here this morning, the hope in Jesus coming again, yeah? To restore order to this broken world should be our uh, main aim, yeah? main thought. That yes, yeah, the world is broken, but we have Jesus who is coming again. A new body free of sin and sickness. Uh, Pawson, David Pawson says that when Jesus comes, everybody will receive a body of 33 years old. Yeah? Uh, so who is 33 here? Maybe Ching Jin is about 33. Look at him, strong and healthy there. So, so we have a new body, strong, free of sickness and free of perish. So how does it affect you and me? Hope. We hope. We have this hope, firm hope that the Lord Jesus will come and take us to be with him and uh, live with him forevermore. So, how should we be ready for his return? As a church, in its body life, and individually, how then are we to live our lives? Uh, the passage uh, for the, this morning uh, is from 2 Peter. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, are we looking forward to this? Make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. This is Peter's call. Yeah? If we do anticipate and believe that Jesus is coming again, then we need to be found spotless, blameless, and be at peace with him. So, how should we respond? As a church, as members of uh, Bangsa Gospel Centre, remain in faithful service. Gather together to worship and praise. This is what we are doing. Continue to do that faithfully. Uh, Tim, Tim just mentioned just now, prayer. Faithful in our service of prayer. Encourage one another in their faith, in your pastoral group, or as we come together. Encourage one another on. You know, uh, human beings are human beings. We need to be pushed on. We need to be encouraged to live 
So let's encourage one another in our faith. Use your resources, your talents, your gifts for the Lord's kingdom. Yeah? I think uh, over the next few weeks, we're going to prepare for Christmas. So we need talented people to come and uh, make this event, uh, an evangelistic event, a meaningful one. How should we respond? Jesus said, go. Yeah? We have to evangelize. So share the gospel and your personal testimony, how you live, your lifestyle to reflect Christ. I'm trying to do that now. The other day I was uh, on my way to the airport and uh, you know, uh, grab driver picked me up. I still remember his name. His name is Mandeep Singh. And I was wondering how to share the gospel with him. And so we started to chat and so on. And I said, oh, I go to a church. I said, oh, yeah, okay. I also went to a church. You know, Mandeep told me uh, he had to do some preparation for some food service, da, 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 da. And that was the time, the opening when I... And I asked him, what, how do, what do you believe? He said, oh, you know, in our Sikh religion, we must do good. We don't owe anybody and so on and so forth. And, you know, that was the time when I had the opportunity to share with him the gospel. So, sharing the gospel... Social reform. Okay, this is a popular topic, but what is our response? To love your neighbor. Right? 2023, I think, anticipated to be a recession year, so are we geared up to help as a church? Yeah? Reach out to your colleagues, to your classmates. Love them and uh, provide encouragement for them so that. Uh, can love our neighbors. Personal holiness. Prayer. We need prayer. We need the sanctification of the Holy Spirit as we offer our bodies to Him. And scriptures coming alive. I took this up from our vision and focus statement there. The scriptures come alive in us as we respond yeah, to Jesus coming again. So when everything is doomed, we look to Jesus who is coming again as our hope and so that we can continue on in our, our journey. So in closing, we are reminded that Christ is coming again and he will surely come. Should we not be prepared for his coming? You know, uh, as I've said, 45 years ago, we, uh, I sang this song in the, in the choir. It doesn't mean much to me. And it didn't mean much to me over the next 40 over years. I confess that the coming of Jesus is very low in my priority because it's such a long time. But I thank the Lord that uh, he did not come. Because if he had come, I would not be ready to receive him. So, let us not uh, be like people who lived during Noah's days. We know that he is coming. But this is what Jesus said. But in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving into marriage. Up to the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So I'm comforted that Jesus has been patient. Yeah? Jesus has been patient with me and Jesus has been patient with us. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. So I thank Jesus for giving me this, what we call the second step, yeah, of getting my house in order in anticipation of his coming. So now that we are reminded that Christ is coming and he will surely come, let us be prepared. For those of us who are saved in Christ, 
Your names are written in the book of life. We will escape the lake of fire, but we must work out our salvation. Be faithful to Jesus' commands. That's what we have just uh, seen. How do we respond? If there's any one of us in the presence, in our presence, who want their name written in this book of life, we invite you to accept Jesus as your Savior. Jesus will indeed write your name in the book of life. This is the second two last verses of the Bible. Revelations chapter 22. He who testifies to these things, Jesus is saying, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus.